aside from actually performing magic, one of the most amazing things that you can do is to remember people's names. Now, when I perform at events, maybe I've worked at the drinks reception, and then I'm working around the tables during the dinner, and if I see some people that I've worked for at the drinks reception, and I tell them what their name is, you see, when I go up to a table, or a group, I will introduce myself, and I will say what I'm doing and what's going on. I'd ask if they'd like to see some magic, and I'll ask them for their names. And when the people tell me their names, I make a point of remembering what their name is. And so when I go back later on, if I've been at a drink reception, like I say, and I go around the tables, and I meet people at the tables again, I'm going to pretty much do the same thing because I haven't met everyone on the table, so I'm going to state my name, say who I am for those of you who I haven't met earlier on, and I'm going to ask for people, oh, it's, it's Jane, isn't it, and, uh, and Terry, and uh, Graham, because I've remembered those people's names. Now, quite often when I do this, people uh, say to me things like, God, you should be one of those memory men, because they're amazed that I've remembered their name from half an hour ago when I met them. Admittedly, there's one of me and a hundred people at the party. But they're amazed that I've remembered two or three people's names that I've met, the two or three people that are now on the table, and I've met all of them. And they're amazed that I've remembered that. Well, in truth, it's really, really very simple to remember people's names. In this video, I'm going to give you the technique that I use to remember people's names. It's a simple thing to do, it's simple to do the first time you ever do it, and once you do it regularly it just becomes an automatic thing, and then you just become one of those people who are good at remembering names and faces. If you're not, this will make it so, and this will make it so it automatically happens, because you'll just practice it a number of times and then you'll just do it as automatically as you do any other piece of behaviour, like tying your shoelace or driving your car. So, I think remembering people's names Obviously, for building rapport, which is what all of the wonder and the magic and the excitement of performing magic all sits, if there is no rapport with your audience, then there's no magic. You're presenting puzzles and little tricks and you're not astounding or astonishing people. And one of the best things really is to be able to address the person that you're performing for, the group of people you're performing for, by name, because you actually know who they are. You've taken the time to remember their name. The simple thing that I do, let's say I'm at a table of ten. There are ten people at a wedding or a corporate event, all sat round a table. Now, I look at the first person, after I've introduced myself, I look at the first person and ask their name. I will always generally tend to just go for a lady first, ladies first. I will generally tend to the closest woman on the right hand side somewhere I will look towards and I will ask their name. Now, um, if there are a number of women here, so there are five men and five women on the table, uh, if, if there are some really very attractive young lady or a couple of young women over there uh, and some older women sat here, I, I will generally speaking not go for the most attractive people on the table to start with. Uh, if there are some older people on the table, well, they've got more seniority, they've got more age, they've got more wisdom, they've got more knowledge. They probably have more respect amongst the people. I am going to look at them and smile and, and say hello and ask them their name first. If, um, if, if I didn't, if I, if I ignored them and went straight for the pretty woman opposite, then they're going to think, why has he started over there? He started with the pretty woman. And instantly you're going to start to break a little bit of the rapport that you've already started to gain. Similarly, if I go straight for the pretty woman and go, oh wow, you're lovely, what's your name? It's creep. So it has its advantages to kind of ignore them a little, um, to, not, to not fawn all over them, but to, to just come to them as you go through the, the cycle round the table asking the people their name. It's kind of, um, it's kind of like chive, it's kind of like pushing. Um, you kind of like push them a little bit because they're obviously the most, you know, you know you put, if, if you push them and if you push somebody in and kind of push them and, and push them a little and push them, when you stop pushing, they come towards you. It's a very deep rapport gaining kind of uh, 
idea chiding, pushing people away, pushing them away, pushing them away, pushing them away, and when you stop pushing, well, then they start coming closer. I physically mean with your hand, uh, and I certainly don't really have time to go into all of that here right now, but suffice it to say, I will start with a uh, woman, normally, somebody, uh, generally speaking, to the right-hand side, and I will ask her her name, and she will, most of the time, 99% of the time, reply straight away with her name. So, what's your name? Jane. So, I will say Jane back. So, I'll look at her, she will say, I'm Jane. And I say, nice to meet you, Jane. Now, I'm not going to say nice to meet you, Jane, nice to meet you, Tom, nice to meet you, everybody, all the way around the table. But to start with, I will, nice to meet you, Jane, and I will make eye contact with her. Now, what I do at that point is, uh, for Jane, I would put Jane Austen right behind it, or what I believe Jane Austen looks like, right behind this person called Jane. And I would imagine seeing Jane Austen stood up behind the Jane who's just introduced herself to me. Then I turn to the next person. What's your name? Tom. Tom. Again, you see, I'm not going to say, Tom, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Well, ten people. Nice to meet you. I, I'm John. I'm not going to introduce myself ten times. I've done that at the beginning. I'm going to do that again at the end. So with Tom up, Tom, a little nod, as though, yeah, making, I'm acknowledging your, I've got your name. Yeah, Tom. And I'm picturing Tom Selleck behind him. Okay, then we go to the next person, Gemma. Um, Gemma is, uh, I know somebody called Gemma. She always wears um, fantastic uh, earrings and necklaces and jewellery and all that kind of stuff. So... Uh, there's Gemma behind her, with all her bling. Um, and then we uh, Gary. Again, Gary. I know a person called Gary, a very uh, extrovert kind of guy, great guy. So Gary's stood behind Gary. And then Dave is the fifth person. And normally, when I get to the fifth person, Dave, Dave, nice to meet you. I'll say nice to meet you again. I'll kind of pause there. Then I'll go back. I'll go, Jane... I'll go back to the, the first person that I looked at just there. We'll go Jane, Tom, Gemma, Dave. Sorry, Gemma, Tim, Dave. There's no people here, I'm just imagining them. And I will run through and uh, picture... I will run through their names again. What I do the second time when I look at the people is Jane... Well, she had Jane Austen's haircut and her sort of dress. When I looked back at that Jane, I, I just imagined some of those qualities superimposed. And likewise, when I looked over at uh, Tom there, he's got Tom Selleck's huge moustache. It's a caricature version of Tom Selleck's moustache, and it's on there like that. The next person, Gemma, she's got all this bling. She's covered in all this jewellery, this Gemma. Uh, Gary, he's got the little ponytail thing going on. And I'm superimposing qualities of the famous person or the friend of mine onto the real people that I'm talking to. And also, I'm saying their name again. So I get to Dave. I've just asked five people their names. I kind of pause a little bit, and I go back and I look at everyone, and I kind of just sort of, um, Jane, almost to myself I'm doing it. It comes to the audience. It kind of looks like um, I'm doing some kind of strange memory technique to remember everyone's name. And I am. That's what I'm doing. I'm repeating their names. The reason this technique is so effective is because... I am I'm hearing the person's name and then I'm saying the name. So we're definitely doing the audio thing here. And I'm also visualising an imaginary character or a friend of mine behind them. And then when I go back, I'm doing the name again and I'm visualising the uh, whatever thing that makes the famous person stand out or the caricature part of my friend and I'm superimposing that onto the person, so I'm doing the visual thing, and I'm doing this a second time as I go back round. I get to Dave, I do another three people, I look just past Dave to um, the person before Dave, and then I go through all those people right to the end, and ask the last two people their names. Now, it takes about as long as it takes to ask ten people their names and go back through and look at each ten person again. It takes no time at all. It establishes rapport, and if I'm at that table for five or ten minutes, I can use those people's names. If I see them again later on, or if I've met them earlier, I know what their names are. I know how to address them by name. This technique 
is, like I say, it's something that the first time you do it, um, try it in a performance situation or just try it in a social situation. Look at the people, ask them their name, visualise a character behind them, a famous person, a real person, go ask a couple more, come back, superimpose the qualities on top of them and go around. The reason this works really well, like I say, we're using two of our senses, we're using uh, vision, and we're using audio, the sounds and, that we hear and that we say, and the pictures that we imagine, and the things that we really see. So there are as, memory mem there are as many memory techniques as there are people who can remember people's names. There are lots of different memory techniques. This one works because it combines visual and auditory, and you get to repeat. And of course, it feels right. When I look at this person, Gemma, and I see the person Gemma, I say the word Gemma, I see the person Gemma stood behind them, I see the jewellery on them, and it kind of feels right to me. So we've got all three, this is the check when I know it's right. So this is one of the reasons the system works really well. Um, I've taught these kind of memory techniques to a couple of friends of mine that are magicians. One of them actually even... Um, it used it as a party piece at the end of a performance at somebody's house. There were 80 guests there, and he went and named all 80 of them, got every single person's name right. Because he'd taken just a moment to encode the information properly at the beginning when he asked what the people's names were. And it is really simple to do. It's something that the first time you do it, you will have to consciously do it. The second time you do it, you'll have to consciously do it. But give it a couple of months and it will be as automatic as tying your shoelaces, or driving a car, or writing a sentence on a piece of paper. And wow, what a useful thing to have as an automatic piece of behaviour, the fact that you always remember names and faces. Have fun with this little technique, let me know how you get on with it.